I 37 lost my wife of 10 years and it was so devastating for me and my daughter. It's unfortunate but life goes on no matter what happens. My family knows how much I struggle as a single dad and my sister doesn't really get it. She had issues with my late wife in the past but now started helping with my daughter. She redecorated my daughter's room without my consent, she'd insist I let my daughter go spend days at her house but my daughter is comfortable at her home. She then started calling my daughter with another name and I'm still trying to understand her logic behind this. I told her to stop doing those things and to be respectful and supportive and she defended herself saying I'm lashing out of grief. I recently started teaching my daughter to do stuff on her own like brush her hair, clean her room, wash her cups, make sandwiches while I take care of bigger stuff. My sister said that what I'm doing is wrong. That I'm giving her more than she can handle. She's just a kid and although I told her I'm teaching my daughter to be more independent she said that I'm clearly doing this for my own benefits and avoiding responsibility. I got into a fight with her about it. Told her she has zero say in this. And the next day. A CPS officer came to my house and took a tour around the house my first thought was maybe he got the wrong house until he started reading the report to me saying that I'm never home and that I make my daughter do things that aren't her responsibility, neglecting her education, by the way she's homeschooled, and that I'm not taking care of basic hygiene and whatnot. I told the officer my story and explained that I'm adapting as a single parent and he proceeded to ask my daughter some questions. It was clearly a false report. However, I was told that I will have a permanent record with CPS and I was shaken up by this. I told my family about it and my younger sister told me that my sister was the one who called CPS after we had a big argument. I was so mad I confronted her after she hit herself. Called her immature and stupid to pull this crap, she's in her 40s, and that she's no longer my sister. Then cut contact. It's been months and now my dad started bringing her up knowing how uncomfortable I was. He said that my sister feels sorry for what she did and wanted to talk things out on Christmas dinner. But I said no. He and the others insisted saying that I should be the bigger person. The family will be incomplete without me and my daughter on Christmas. Saying I refuse to be a civil adult to solve the issue that is dividing the family. I yelled and said that my daughter and I don't have to go after what she did, doesn't matter if she has issues on her own and didn't mean it and was just concerned. What the hell was she so concerned about? They demanded that I at least let my daughter go be with them and her auntie on Christmas. Not the idiot. Not only did your sister overstep her boundaries but she was very inconsiderate towards how you were teaching your daughter to become more independent. It's definitely important to teach a child early on how to practice hygiene on their own. I'd be furious if I was in your shoes. I'm surprised your family doesn't understand why you would be so upset. Not the idiot. My four-year-old knows how to do some of that stuff supervised but still teaching kids how to take care of themselves is not only is going to help them be healthier adults but builds confidence while they're children it is very healthy and normal for them to know how to do things for themselves her having a new name picked out for your daughter is a weird and huge red flag i'd say this was coming down the pipeline fight or not i would remain very very firm on this boundary and not allow her to have any contact or relationship with your daughter if your parents don't like that, they can figure out how to be more involved in ways that don't involve your psycho sister. Family members who enable crazy people don't necessarily deserve the title of family either. Your sister did something that would be unforgivable in my opinion. She could have very seriously and negatively impacted you and your daughter because she wasn't getting her way with your child. Also your family is seriously rug sweeping your sister's behavior as well, which would be putting them on thin ice with me as well. I'm so sorry for you and your daughter's loss and the additional stress your family is causing. I have three kids, six, four and nearly a year old. When I was pregnant with my youngest, I hired a sitter to pick the other two up from school and watch them. We really liked her and appreciated her. My eldest loved her babysitter but she began to develop a huge attitude. I know one of her friends has a nanny who she's basically allowed to boss around with little consequence. We told my daughter that her sitter is in charge and she's to respect her, not demand things of her. A few months ago, the sitter asked my daughter to grab the baby's diaper bag and my daughter sassed back saying you can't tell me what to do, I'm the boss of you. Sitter told me that night and I immediately addressed it, in front of the sitter. I told my daughter that was not acceptable, 
She's not the boss of anyone and I took away her TV privilege for a week. It happened again just a month later and I had a much sterner talk with her, took away more privileges. Both times I made her verbally apologize and write a note of apology to her sitter. The sitter accepted it but I could tell she was losing patience. I didn't blame her and ended up giving her a raise out of guilt. I also stopped arranging playdates for her and the friend who treated her nanny terribly, they don't go to the same school, so they don't see each other at all anymore. Alad I did try talking with my daughter calmly and asking why she felt this was okay. She'd say we pay her, I'm her boss. And I said no, that's not true. I said she is hired to take care of her and deserved respect. My daughter would always seem to understand. Well, things came to a head a few weeks ago. My daughter was acting up, Sitter had tried several de-escalation tactics but finally told her to go of quiet time in her room. My daughter screamed in her face I'm the boss of you. I'll get you fired. The sitter calmly picked up the phone and called me, we have cameras in our house which she knew about, and told me to come home, immediately. Upon arrival, she quit. Nothing I said or did could make her stay, and I understood. I was furious with my daughter and let her have it. She had several things taken away from her and she didn't do anything remotely fun until recently. This whole thing has left us in a bind. Luckily, the school that my younger two go to is open later, so I can pick them up when I get off work. I've been scrambling to find a new sitter but in the meantime, I got my daughter into an after-school program. Because there's no more sitter, there's no one to take her to her swim class. She's been complaining that she can't do it anymore and I told her that it's her own fault. She is why her sitter quit and until I can find someone new, she won't get to do the fun activities that her sitter took her to. My husband agrees that there's nothing we can do, but thinks I was far too harsh with our daughter, saying she's only six. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot, your daughter was out of control and for a six-year-old her punishments were fine. She's out of line completely and until she gets herself together most would have pulled her out of swim entirely because of her nasty behavior. I don't know what her friend's sitter was going through but the sitter you had was smart. You are the idiot, she did something naughty but totally normal for a six-year-old, and you took away her TV privileges for an entire week? That's so out of proportion. She's six. A time out and maybe no TV for one day would have been fine. Then a month later she acted out, that is a long time between behaviors. I highly doubt your child was capable of connecting the two incidents with them being that far apart. You can teach your child consequences without assigning blame like that. You were too harsh and I feel bad for your kid. Learn what is developmentally appropriate for your children, please. Not the idiot. She is old enough to understand how to respect others, especially when it has been explained to her multiple times that how she was acting is wrong. Even if you do get another sitter I would suggest not letting her do any activities until she shows decent respect to a new person. If you reward her for bad behavior she will only grow up with more of an attitude. It's best to catch it now before it becomes a bad habit. I supervise 15 employees. Annie got too comfortable WFH. We gave a wide berth for everyone to try to cope, but Annie took a mile. She'd attend meetings in her unmade bed with bed head, let her dogs bark and insist she couldn't put them in another room, etc. We let it slide because this was an adjustment for all but did remind her that despite us being on Zoom, we needed to still act and try to look professional. After coming back, it got worse. We don't expect everyone to be runway ready, but she'll wear hoodies that have obviously been worn for days, leggings, ratty shoes, hair in a very messy bun, old makeup, etc. Annie came in with a black fleece absolutely covered in dog hair. I pulled her aside, asked if she had a change of clothes for our 11 a.m. meeting. She said no. I asked then do you have a lint roller? She again said no and looked down and asked what was wrong with what she was wearing. At this point I'd had enough and said dude, you're covered in dog hair, she giggled and said I gave the doggies extra snuggles before work. I tried my best to be gentle, saying she had to either change or take off the jacket. Eleven comes around, I'm greeting clients, she comes in, still covered in nasty dog hair. I pulled her out of the room saying we forgot her USB went to my office and handed her a lint brush. I told her to get as much of the dog hair off her jacket as she could, and we'd have a talk later. Annie stomped off instead and said she was using her sick time for the rest of the day. I handled the meeting. 
she threw a fit all over social media about her oppressive employer who just doesn't understand what depression or anxiety are, how hard she worked just to get out of bed, etc. She said I shamed her publicly, made her feel lower than low, all because she was experiencing separation anxiety from her dogs while she was at work and was struggling with depression dealing with everything. I have an outdated idea of being office ready. The comments were what made me come here to post. Pretty much everyone siding with her on our archaic ideas of working in offices, how we obviously don't care about our employees' mental health, etc. I know we're facing a new normal kind of situation where things are rapidly changing. We are not the kind of business where everything can be done remotely forever, and I don't think that it's a stretch to request someone use a freaking lint roller before a meeting. But that's why I'm here. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. I'd write her up, not necessarily for the wardrobe stuff, she can consider that instance as her first verbal warning and will be written up in the future, but the social media behavior. That is unacceptable, and depending on the company's policy, possibly a reason for immediate termination. But yeah, her behavior is completely unacceptable. New normal does not mean throwing everything out the window just because you gotta wear with wearing hoodies for a while. Not the idiot. Unless you were aware of her mental health issues prior to this incident, how were you supposed to know she was having issues dealing with depression and anxiety? It isn't unreasonable to ask your employees to dress appropriately. It's not like you were asking her to come in a full business suit, you just wanted her to not be covered in dog fur. Everyone's the idiot here. Annie needs to be work ready, but you don't sound like you're handling this very well as her manager. You are tiptoeing around the actual issue instead of dealing with it head on. Stop giving way to these new normal excuses, and start taking some actual action to address the issue. Get your concerns in writing, have a meeting with her, and preferably someone from HR, have her sign something at the end of the meeting that she understands what was discussed. How is she supposed to know her behavior is an issue when her own manager treats it like it's no big deal? Hi. I'm a 32-year-old widow. Have been for three years I struggled a lot financially. I didn't get help from my family because they claim they can't so I decided to start a home daycare. It's been open for 7 months now. My friend was able to get me more clients via Facebook. Thank goodness my business is growing and I've made quite a lot of friends who are moms and also established good reputation since my daycare has been recommended. My sister, 26, is unemployed. Didn't find a job yet and had rent to pay for her and her boyfriend. My parents suggested I let her come work with me at my daycare and accepted since she has experience in the past. I agreed to let her come and earn her living. She got along with the other workers and things were going fine. Until she came to me asking about a specific child that comes to our daycare. He's four. Very well behaved for his age. I was confused after she complained about him. She said she saw his dad come over to pick him up and didn't feel comfortable when she saw him because he's a police officer and she had an unpleasant incident with the police, because of something her boyfriend did, that she needed therapy for and struggled a lot from. She wanted me to let the child go and tell the parent to look for another daycare. He usually arrives at 3 p.m. to pick the kid up. From what I understand his wife's sick. I refused. I've no good reason to let the child go. My sister refused to drop it and started being mean to the dad. It was unprofessional of her. I told her she either be respectful or I won't have her work with me anymore. Two days ago she sent an email to the dad telling him we won't be welcoming his kid at the daycare anymore. He came to talk to me and I was livid when I saw the email. He asked why and talked about his kid wanting to stay because he's friends with other kids. Talked about not being able to find a daycare closer than ours. I lashed out at my sister and I told her she's no longer able to work at the daycare because of her behavior. We got into an argument and she left after saying I was being unsupportive and inconsiderate. My parents called me saying I shouldn't have kicked my sister out and now causing her to lose her apartment. They argued I have no regard for my sister trauma and I should have let the child go and support her because she's my sister. Everyone shamed me and claimed I had messed up priorities. I felt I was in the wrong for letting her struggle now without a job but I have no reason to let go of the child as well. He wears a uniform. My aunt suggested that I ask him to get someone else to come and pick up his kid or at least I let her leave before 3 pm. And arrive a bit late in the morning. But others would notice the difference in treatment at the daycare. 
I understand that there are parents struggling and I do all I can to help out and be supportive. Yes, she's my younger sister, but treating people like that was unprofessional of her. One thing to clarify. My sister's boyfriend is in no contact with my family due to issues. However, they said they want to support my sister and be in contact with her and support her although they don't have a relationship with her boyfriend. That's why they keep pressuring me to help and support her. Not the idiot. You could have lost the whole business because of what she did, and you gave her plenty of warning. Even if she needed therapy, she was still being beyond unreasonable. She could have excused herself for a break at the time the cop came to come to his kid, and she'd have never needed to see him, but instead she went behind your back and went against your explicit instructions. She got exactly what she deserves. Your sister has stepped so far off the line that the line is now a dot to her. She isn't the owner of the daycare. How dare she take executive decisions for it? Today it's let's fire this kid, tomorrow she could take a decision that could prove dangerous. She appears to not have good judgment at all. The correct way to approach it would have been to take herself out of the situation when the kid's parent comes for pickup. That way she won't be triggered. But for your family and sister to ask you to jeopardize your business when they're unwilling to help you is just sheer cheek. Not the idiot. Not the idiot. Please ignore those saying your priorities are messed up. What your sister did is outrageously unprofessional and appallingly out of line. She does not get to dictate your clientele, or be abusive to them because they occupy any given profession. Nor is her struggle to find a job your responsibility, you have your own life and worries, and are making a living. It is her unprofessional behavior that caused her current difficulties.